Techno Update. Subscribe now. The phone ships with a USB cable, a fast charger, it has a jack adapter, a screen protector and a pretty nice soft TPU case to protect your phone. The Vernier X has a really impressive spec sheet that definitely draws a lot of attention. Also it has a massive battery that is crammed into a relatively compact profile. That battery holds up really well and depending on how you use the phone, it should last you for days. Under my usage, I could get over 14 hours of screen on time and I still had about 30% left, which is really impressive. It takes about 2 hours to fully charge the phone with a supplied fast charger. There are a few things that I like and a few things that I don't really like about the looks of the Verni X. Obviously, it's great to have a full screen design and that huge display is pretty good for a budget phone. I don't know if the phone has metal frame inside, but it sports a somewhat textured matte plastic finish, which may be nice to the touch, but honestly, I prefer all metal design or at least a combination of glass and metal. On the other hand, the phone's build quality is solid, the buttons are nice and the phone does not feel cheap. There is a notification LED light, front-facing LED flash, and a supposedly dual camera setup on the front. You get another dual camera setup on the back, but of course, we'll see how it really works a little bit later in this review. I found the fingerprint scanner to be accurate, but the display could light up a little bit faster. There is no headset jack, but the quality of sound via supplied adapter is quite decent. Finally, the loudspeaker sound quality is just mediocre and I wish it was much louder. In terms of gaming, I expected a bit better overall performance. Well, you can play all the 3D games on the highest graphics, but you should expect a few skipped frames here and there, which is really disappointing given powerful internals of this phone. I expected buttery smooth performance, but this is a sub $200 phone after all. Thankfully, the Vernier X does not have any overheating issues. The phone ships with Android 7.1 and I love that they preserved a stock look. You can customize the navigation bar, use a few gesture and motion controls, but that's pretty much it. The phone runs on bare bones Android and I like it. However, there is the UI bug that prevented me from running a Geekbench 4 benchmark test. Hopefully, this will be fixed soon. The overall performance is pretty good despite a bit slower animations than usual, but that's just nitpicking, I have no complaints. There is an annoying software bug in the camera app. Sometimes the app shows that the image is out of focus once you are taking the picture, but it's actually in focus. I was able to solve this issue by using a third party camera app. The overall image quality is mediocre as most of the pictures lack detail and sharpness and the colors are not always accurate. There is also a portrait mode that takes bad looking pictures. The usual story here, camera software creates a fake bokeh effect leading to the question if the secondary sensor does anything at all. Night image quality is again just mediocre like on most of these cheap phones. Selfies are usable but again, they could be more detailed. A selfie portrait mode takes artificial looking images just like the main camera. 1080p video quality is just poor. There is also a huge crop factor for some reason making the video more shaky and less usable. 480p video that is recorded using a selfie camera looks just terrible. There is not only a huge crop factor but also the sound is out of sync. Really frustrating. I didn't have any connectivity issues with this device as the call quality and signal reception were pretty good and even the GPS lock speeds and accuracy were okay. The phone has quite a few sensors including a gyroscope so you'll be able to use this phone with VR headsets.